Hello, my name is Mrs. Travis Keene. I'm a museum educator at the Baltimore Museum of Industry, where every week I lead a program called We Workers. Today, of course, I have a friend who helps me. His name is Chicken Teague, and the topic today is the Chesapeake Bay. The Chesapeake Bay, of course, is just right beyond our harbor here. Hi, Chicken Teague. <clears throat> Do you know we're going to talk about the Chesapeake Bay? You love to talk about the Chesapeake Bay, don't you? There are a lot of interesting animals and fish and flora and fauna that uh, inhabit the bay. Well, the Chesapeake Bay, did you know it gets half of its water from the Atlantic Ocean? You didn't know that. Half of the water from the Atlantic Ocean, half of its water comes from the drainage from the watershed, the land around here. There's about 64,000 square miles of watershed. Isn't that interesting? Did you know that our Chesapeake Bay also is the largest estuary in the United States? You didn't know that either? Yeah, it's the largest one in the United States. Cool. Well, we're going to uh, read some books and we have some cool crafts we're going to do. Did you know today's going to be our last little program though for a while? Yes, you did. I t we talked about that, didn't we? We hope to see you guys back here in the fall though. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, oh yes, your jokes, your jokes, your jokes. <laughs> okay. All right. What is your first joke? Tell me again, where does a fish keep their money? I didn't know fish had money, for heaven's sake. I don't know, Chicken Dig, where does a fish keep their money? In the river bank. Ah, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> In the river bank, yes, that, that's a good one. Okay, what's the other one? Ah, why don't fish like to play tennis? Now, I would say because they don't have tennis rackets. I don't know, why, why the fish don't like tennis? Ah, because they're afraid of the nets, of course, because nets can catch fish, doesn't it? Isn't that true? Yeah. And you have one more, right? Because you told me today you had three. Okay. <laughs> what kind of fish can chase mice? That's a good one. What kind of fish chase mice? I don't know that one. I couldn't even dream it up. Hmm. Oh, catfish. Oh, that's a good one, too. <laughs> Where do you find all these? Do you read books? You have a joke book? Okay, well, that explains where you, where you get your funny jokes, Chicken Tea. Well, listen, Chicken Tea, we're going to read some uh, two stories today. One is about a little guy named Chadwick. Have you ever heard of Chadwick? Yeah, he's kind of famous, isn't he? We're going to read a book about Chadwick and his friends, and then we have another book about a fish that's kind of curious. I think you're going to like him, and then we'll talk about some crafts. So you want to sit over here and listen to the story while we... Okay, we'll put you over here, and you can listen to the story. While we proceed, the first book is called Meet Chadwick and His Chesapeake Bay Friends. Meet Chadwick. Look at him. Doesn't he look like a nice, friendly guy there? Meet Chadwick. Chadwick the Crab. Oh, my gosh. It says, whoops. If you would meet, like to meet a crab, a crab with googly eyes, then come along and take a look. You're in for a surprise. Look at him. There he is. Chadwick. Isn't he interesting looking? Hmm? Meet Chadwick the Chesapeake Crab, as happy as can be. He lives beneath the blue waters in a bay beside the sea. Can you see him? He has eight legs to help him swim and two big pinchers too. He swims and pinches all day long. It's what crabs like to do. Look at him, isn't he nice? Pinchers and eight legs, for heaven's sake. Young Chadwick has a lot of friends in the bay and on the beach. Some like the water, some like land, and some like some of each. So they like land and water, both. They see animals. Look at this. Chicken tea, there's some birds and some fish. My goodness. It says, some friends have noses, some have beaks, and some of them have bills. Some friends have feathers, some have fur, and some of them have gills. Did you know that? So gills, fur, feathers. Look at all these. Look at all these guys. We're going to learn about some of these. Good heavens. Meet Bernie. 
He's a seagull. Look at Bernie. Boy, he's flying high, isn't he? Always looking for some lunch. He loves a fish at dinner time and cookies by the bunch. Friend Bernie is a fat old bird, as happy as can be. He eats his fish and flies above the bay beside the sea. Can you see Bernie? Look at him, he's flying really high. It's fun to watch him circle in the sky, isn't it, chicken tea? Meet Miss Matilda, white egret, a proper one at that. She always looks her very best with flowers in her hat. She has flowers in her hat, my goodness. Matilda is a ladybird, as fussy as can be. She loves her mucky, muddy marsh near the bay beside the sea. So this animal likes the marsh. She likes to walk around in the mud. See her? With the flowers in her hat. Ha! Flowers in her hat. Oh, look at this one. I bet you like this one, chicken tea. Meet, now meet, Toulouse, the Canada goose, who visits from the north. He flies back home in spring and says he likes the back and forth. This guy likes to go back and forth. And here Toulouse, the traveling goose, honk, honk, joyously. He loves to spend his winters at the bay beside the sea. So he likes to come here in the winter. Look at him, isn't he nice? He's got a hat, a beret on. You can see his friends flying off in the distance. See him? Flying off in the distance. Oh, look at this. Meet Hector Specter, jellyfish, the silliest fish you'll find. He goes this way and that way because he can't make up his mind. You ever had that trouble with chicken? Do you can't make up his mind? Watch Hector Specter, jellyfish, wishy washy as can be. He doesn't know which way to go in his bay beside the sea. Look at this jellyfish. He doesn't know which way to go. Should I go forward? Should I go back? Chadwick is looking at him like, what are you going to do now? Where are you going to go now? <clears throat> Meet Belly Jeans the Flounder at the bottom of the bay. He snuggles beneath the sand, and there he wants to, set, to stay. See the flounder? He likes to be way down. See Belly Jeans the Flounder Fish as splat, flat as can be. He loves life at the bottom of the bay beside the sea. He likes being way down at the bottom. Look at him, way down. He makes a point of going down into the sand. And now meet <coughs> Oliver Oyster. Shh. It's hard to see his face. He's very shy and quiet too and stays in just one place. Look at Oliver Oyster. He stays in just one place. He doesn't move about. His shell is hard and crusty and as solid as can be. He calls that crusty shell his home in the bay beside the sea. See him? See his eyes? He, he, his house is right there with him. His house is right there with him. Chicken tea. Oh, look at this one. Meet stately Baron Von Heron. So tall and slim and blue. He can be short when he wants to, or tall to see far, too. So this animal has the ability to stand up very tall, very tall, can you see him? Or he can squat down, be shorter. The great blue, blue Baron von Heron, a bird of royalty, he watches out for all his friends in the bay beside the sea. Whoops, there, can you see him? Yep. Doesn't he look stately and tall? Meet Sid and Sal, an osprey pair, who found a marker best to build a home and spend their time in the great big stick-filled nest. Yeah, uh, osprey love to make big, big nests out of stick. They opened up a diner too. Friends eat there frequently. The food is good, and Sid and Sal at Sid and Sal's in the bay beside the sea. Look at those guys. They have a diner. Who knew? Who knew? Hmm. Meet Esmeralda, lady crab, uh, with claw tips all in red. She loves cute Chadwick. He loves her. That's all that need be said. Can you see them? See the two of them? So pretty Esmeralda is, so happy and so free. 
All day she plays with Chadwick in the bay beside the sea. Can you see them? She's the one in front. See, she's got a little bit of red tips on her uh, pincher claws. Chadwick and his friend, Esmeralda. <laughs> Though Chadwick and his many friends are different as can be, they live happily together in a bay beside the sea. They're all friends. They're different. They have different kinds of food. They live in different kind of habit, different kind of nest homes. But they're all friends. Isn't that a nice book about Chadwick and his friends? You might be able to find this book at the library, hopefully. You have some time to read. Well, I have another book, too. Uh, remember Chicken Tea? I said I would read two today. This one is also about a fish. It's called the Pout Pout Fish. I think you'll find this funny. I'm not sure this guy lives in the Chesapeake Bay, but he's an interesting character, and there's a nice little message in this book. The Pout Pout Fish. Oh my gosh. Deep in the water, where the fish hang out, lives a glum, gloomy swimmer with an ever-present pout. You know what a pout is, don't you, chicken tea, where you look, you're kind of unhappy, you're kind of a frown, a pout, right? I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, 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 he says. Oh my gosh, look at him. He does have sort of a frown, doesn't he? He has a frown, chicken tea. Along comes Clam with a wide winning grin and a pearl of advice for her pal to take in. Here's the clam, she says. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your crosstown frown, don't you think it's time to turn it upside down, she says? I think that sounds good advice. Says the fish to his friend, nice thought, Ms. Clam. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. He says, that's just the way I am. Huh. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Take a I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, 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 he says. Oh, my gosh, here he is. Just, that's just the way he is. He listened to Miss Clam, but... Hmm. Along comes a jellyfish. He floats through the ocean, his tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scaly scowl, I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl. See, the, the jellyfish has some advice, too. Says the fish to his friend, ah, Mr. Jelly, I agree. I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me, he says. It isn't up to me thinks he doesn't have any choice. He thinks he doesn't have any choice, huh? I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread dreary wearies all, wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. But this is just my face. This is how I am. Hmm. Along comes a squid. Quite a slender, squiggly sight. She is squirmy and she is squelchy. She is slightly impolite. Hey, Mr. Fish, your kaleidoscope of mope. How about a smile, a little joy, a little hope, she says. Ha, huh. says the fish to his friend, Mrs. Squid, I would try, but I haven't any choice. Take a look and you'll see why, he says. Look at my face. This is who I am. She's like, I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, 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 he says. Oh, my heavens, look at him there. The other animals are looking at him like, hmm. Hmm. Along comes an octopus with eight great arms covered on the underside with tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish. Let me tell it to you straight. You're hulky, bulky, sulky. It's an unattractive trait, he's saying. It's not very attractive for you to be like this. Says the fish to his friend, Mr. Eight, my chum, with a mouth like mine, I am destined to be glum. Do you know that word destined? That means 
You don't have any choice. That's your destiny. I am destined. It's a big word, isn't it, guys? Oh, I'm a pout-pout fish with a pout-pout face. Huh. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Glove, glove, glove. Look at him there. There's the octopus. Can you see him? He's saying, I am just, this is who I am all the time. Now, along comes a fish in a silent silver shimmer. The gang has never seen before this bright, brilliant swimmer. Here's somebody they don't know. This is a new character. Hmm. She approaches Mr. Fish, but instead of saying, hey, here's the fish. See him down here? Instead of saying, hey, she plants a kiss upon his pout. <gasps> and then she swims away. Look at that. She goes, oh my heavens, look at that. She doesn't say anything to him. She doesn't have any advice, but she gives him a little... <sighs> Mr. Fish is most astounded. Mr. Fish is just aghast. He is stone-faced like a statue. Then he blinks and speaks at last. Look at him. He's just dumbfounded. Oh, my heavens. What was that? My friends, says Mr. Fish. Oh, I should have known it all along. I thought that I was pouty, but it turns out... I was wrong. Look at that chicken tea. He decides perhaps he's not looking at things correctly. I'm a kiss kiss fish with a kiss kiss face. Ah, for spreading cheery cheeries all over the place. Look at him. Look at that smile. Whoa, doesn't he look good? Doesn't it just cheer you up, chicken tea? What a happy guy. Look at that. Smooch, 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 smooch. Look at the kisses he's given back. Give kisses the octopus. Oh my gosh, and the clam and the jellyfish and the squid. Look at him. Oh my heavens. Ha! Huh. Smooch. And there's that silver fish again. Yay. Turns out good, right? Sometimes a kiss is all it takes to turn things around. This is a wonderful story by uh, Deborah Dyson. Again, sometimes you just need to look at things in a little more positive light. Correct, Chicken Tea? Well, along with that, we have some fun crafts and activities for you to do. Uh, one is to make a little crab if you choose. And all I have done here is I have used a paper plate. And probably some of you have a paper plate around your house. Just a normal, ordinary paper plate. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And what I did with that paper plate to make a crab is I folded it in half, just like this. Drew a little line so I know where to cut. Cut this in half. Then I have a piece like this, which of course is going to be part of my crab. Part of my crab. And to make the claws, I took what was left, the other half, the other half of the plate, and I just folded it one more time so that, I, in fact, I have quarters, and I just drew a free-form little claw. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you cut out that little claw, and what you're able to do with that is you take, you also make strips of paper that you fold to attach the claw little strips of paper. Again, if you have red coloring paper, that's good, but if you don't, you just take a crayon and color this. Attach the strip to the claw to the paper plate. And again, I cut out another one, just like this, to make the second pincher, remember? And as for the eyes, I just cut out little strips of red paper and made an eye on each end, on each end of these, to make the little eyes for the crab. But it looks like that. Again, all you need is a paper plate. Same paper plate, you can make another animal. I did the same thing. I folded the, the paper plate in half, took a crayon. This time I took blue crayon and colored it and made a fish. This can be a shark or any kind of fish you want. But the fact that you have folded it means that this little animal will sit on a table and you can, and it'll, it'll uh, sort of swim if you, if you touch it like that, can you see that? Let me put it on a book so you can see a little better. Put it like this. There you go. And again, after I uh, uh, 
collared him and folded him in half. I took part of other paper or another uh, paper plate and cut out freeform shapes for the fin and the tail. It doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just making a little guy that you can play with, a little fish that will swim. If you go to our Visit From Home page, you'll see that we also have a lot of coloring pages and a game. There's a game you can color and cut out. This one is called Matching the Ducks. And of course, there are lots of ducks that inhabit the Bay Area. And this is a page like this where there are 12 little ducks. And what I did is I colored, colored them all, but make sure you make two of each color. You have six, 12 little ducks, but you want to have six little matches. So you have 12 ducks. And then you can cut those apart and see if you can match them. Again, put them face down and see if you can match them. But do visit our From Home page. There are all kinds of images. We have an image of uh, different plants and animals on the Chesapeake Bay. There is a nice uh, coloring picture of a crab that you could color as well. You could cut him out, put him on the refrigerator, put him on your room door. I hope you enjoyed today's program, uh, and we hope to see you back in the fall. Right, Chicken Tea? You want to say goodbye one more time? Say goodbye one more time to the little kids. <clears throat> this is going to be... This was a special program, wasn't it? All about our Chesapeake Bay and how we appreciate the bay so much. Well, thank you very much. Uh, take care, and we hope to see you later. Bye. <laughs>